you and I like hair, or at least I think you do. It's fine, dude. Look, it's Jesus Christ. Why is there a hook over here, though? I don't know about the hook over here, though. Jesus Christ. Maybe you hate it if you've already lost your hair and it's sort of a smug to get back at the people who have hair because you miss your hair. But I think generally most people appreciate having hair and not being bald. Bald, 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 bald. I have cared about my physical outward appearance for a lot of my life and continue to do so as I think most people do, whether they like to admit it or not. Some people like to certainly claim that they don't care about what they look like or how they present themselves. I tend to think that those people just don't know what they're talking about. And really most of us do care how we present ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on what kind of groups we're in. But it, there is a thing that you could do, you know, as far as like surgical or topical things like that. But I personally wouldn't stress on it, massage it, give it a nice blood flow here as much as possible, and don't think about it. And you might think right now, Colton, you're so vain, like no one gives a shit. Look, it, it doesn't matter how big and tough you are. At the end of the day, you care about your outward appearance. You care about how people see you, what they see you as, who they think of you as when they first look at you. And one of those big factors of your outward appearance is your hair. It does, in fact, take up just about half of your head, unless you're filion, and then it takes up your whole head and then some. In fact, according to this study, young women rated the same aged men, bald or non-bald, as the bald men being less physically attractive and less socially attractive compared to their non-bald counterparts. So for someone who's interested in dropping themselves into the dating pool is like a little drop of water because it is so large, hair might be something you're interested in preserving and treating relatively well. Now, I don't have the best hair in the world, but I think I've done pretty good considering I have been on androgens for about seven years or so. And for those of you who are new here, Androgens is anabolic androgenic steroids. I am not like a lot of the people I cover and abuse it recklessly. I do use it when I am trying to compete in bodybuilding. Now I've kind of stopped, so that isn't happening as much, but still my past is definitely catching up to me and does present a problem with my hair maintenance, as does pretty much everybody who does any form of androgenic anabolic steroids. And I know a large part of my audience, which to be honest, about one in three males in a gym are using anabolic steroids, at least statistically what's reported. So I imagine unreported numbers are quite higher. These drugs really do cause hair follicle miniaturization. This is an artifact of testosterone and specifically its metabolites and derivatives acting on specifically the dihydrotestosterone or DHT receptors within your scalp. Essentially, they're androgen receptors. They're just in your scalp. I'm trying to simplify this, guys, okay? I'm just trying to fucking simplify this shit for you. This is why you typically see big guys who are bald with tattoos and huge muscles. Now, I know what you're saying, Colton. You have tons of tattoos. Look, man, I've seen a lot of your comments, okay? I don't give a shit. <laughs> As well, you'll notice in the coming years that a lot of influencers, fitness influencers, are going to be losing their hair or they already have. Think about Lack Guy, for instance. He has been on a tirade in the algorithms of TikTok and Instagram Reels, and he's done really well for himself, but he has admittedly lost a lot of hair. And you can see that hairline whacking back and that Norwood Reaper catching up to him with time. And I'm sure it's gonna get even worse until he's going to have to shave that bad boy. Of course, the ones that don't show their balding get held in high regard because of what I've talked about so many times before, which is the success bias on the internet, which the algorithm only shows us people who are using steroids that do get success the ones that don't get side effects. So you see a lot of them who have really great hair, have really good physiques, but that might not be what most people experience. We genuinely only see these successful juicers on the internet algorithms. It's a really a huge component here. Or what we see is people who have juiced and then they get hair transplants. Think about like Greg Doucette. He got a really good hair transplant. Actually, I would like to get his wherever he got his from. Chris Bumstead, Ian Valier, I mean, Jay Cutler, the, the list goes on and on and on. A lot of these bodybuilders slash influencers have gotten hair transplants. And because of that, their hairline looks much more robust and thus they get those algorithm bumps. Anyways, 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 the whole point of this video is for me to 
show you my hair loss protocol because I've actually been asked so many times in the comments and I pick them up every time and I do read all the comments you guys so please keep commenting it does help me out and I love your guys' opinions and it does make sure that I'm staying on the straight and narrow and not going into the psychosis of you know social media influencer <laughs> areas that has seemingly caught everyone these days so I'm going to break down exactly what I've done to keep my hairline as robust as it has been which to be honest it's nearing its escape velocity from my scalp as we speak it's a little bit of a losing battle but first I'm going to talk about a topical solution that I use from a company called strut health now I have zero zero connection with this company in fact I've just used their products because it's worked so so well and it's an amazing combo of topical solutions that I think is probably one of the best on the internet they have a topical mixture which has dutastride at 0.1 percent minoxidil at 7.5 percent tretinoin at 0.012 percent fluocinolone which is a anti-corticoid it's a, a corticoid basically it reduces inflammation localized to the skin but specifically really useful at reducing inflammation on the scalp which i think is one of the big things that actually is contributing to the hair health here and occasionally they'll come out with products that have metformin in it as well which actually acts as a really potent antioxidant especially when applied topically which is interesting and not many people have explored as a useful tool in hair loss in terms of importance i'm going to go from the most important thing down to the least important i have for sure thought during my period of time that this is the one thing that's helped me keep my hairline really good it keeps my hair thick and then it also really does create more saturation within my hair color i'm actually not currently using it right now i've been out of the usa for some time and just haven't been able to get it because it's a usa based company unfortunately so if you're in the us great for you if you're not it sucks you know you gotta find what you can and the reality of it is that you can actually make this on your own if you wanted to it doesn't take much to formulate it get a carrier and apply this to your scalp it's not too difficult but it does take a little bit of chemistry but i think most of you could probably worry about that um through other means i certainly don't want to explain the how <laughs> Look, it takes a lot for me to have patience to even do that. I, I don't have patience to explain it, so. And when you apply Dutastride topically, you virtually have any symptoms. It's pretty much symptomless, it's innocuous. Whereas when it's taken orally, some people do develop what, what is called post finasteride syndrome, which is another 5-alpha reductase molecule, which is what Dutastride is. And basically what this molecule does or this, this chemical really, is it inhibits the enzyme called 5-alpha reductase in the human body, which cleaves up testosterone and its derivatives into metabolites. And these metabolites are far more androgenic than testosterone itself. When they bind to the antigen receptor on your scalp, they will cause hair follicle miniaturization leading to hair loss. So if you can block the conversion of the parent hormone into the subsequent metabolite, you can conserve your hair a lot better. However, the problem comes into when we talk about male sexual function and dihydrotestosterone and other variations of metabolites from dihydrotestosterone, you do seem to have some down regulation within sexual function in a very small population of people, albeit, but still it is a present problem with finasteride. Taking dutastride for a very long time in my life, I've never ever ever had issues and I've done some pretty extreme dosing protocols and especially using it topically, there is virtually nothing you're going to experience at a negative consequence. Next is dutastride, which I know a lot of people think that they get symptoms and there's a lot of boy, there is just so much pontifications about catastrophizing the effects of dutastride or finasteride, which fair enough, because some of them sound awful. I think those people often have maybe pre-existing issues that they haven't looked at prior to starting finasteride, like their pre-existing serum DHT or their pre-existing testosterone levels, et cetera, et cetera. What I am recommending is you definitely go to my first cycle video. Even if you're not planning on getting on cycle, I would recommend going to that video because it explains how to get blood work and what that would look like for you. And in that video, you will see the labs you should probably get before taking something like Dutastride. But I do think that personally for myself, I have never ever experienced a symptom ever i've dosed 0.5 milligrams everything from every 10 days which seems to be effective because of its kinetics it can last a very long time in serum and does have an effect that is very quantifiable after 10 days to every day 
0.5 milligrams every day to then upping that dose to one milligram every day. And each time I increased the dose, I had negligible side effects. I didn't feel anything in particular. I didn't have any sexual dysregulation. I didn't have any libido decreases. I didn't have any hard times getting harder. None of that actually. What I currently do is I take 0.5 milligrams every three days. And the reason that I do this is just because it's easy to remember and it's a lower cost. The efficaciousness of the drug application being from every day to every 10 days, the increase in, in efficaciousness isn't actually that great. So taking it less frequently isn't gonna kill you in your progress or actually regress your hairline. It's going to probably just do about the same exact thing and be a lot cheaper on your wallet. The dose actually has no rhyme or reason though beyond that. And again, you can dose this if you're really scared of getting any kind of side effects like post synastride syndrome every 10 days. And at that dose, I would have a really, really hard time believing that you would experience some kind of issue that would be like post finasteride syndrome. Now, of course, contact your primary care physician, whoever that is, and ask them what they think. But most of the time, they're going to be generally okay with this because it is innocuous and it fills their pocket with a little bit of cash. The last thing that I do for my hair is probably not something you want to hear. And it's going to be the point in this video where everyone's like, oh, and they switch off and go to another video. But it is, I think, worth mentioning. And that is micronutrient intake. Very simple, very easy, but super fucking important. You see, most people, when they consume foods, even if they're a bodybuilder and they've been on a diet for the past five years, are micronutrient deficient. And I encourage most of you to just plug in your diet into Chronometer. It's a great application, much better than MyFitnessPal. It shows you all of the micronutrients, or at least most of the micronutrients within the human diet. In, in that, it'll also show you where the deficiencies lie in your current diet. And you'd be surprised to find that most people, even if they eat a relatively whole food diet, are micronutrient deficient in several things, ranging from omega-3 fatty acids to selenium to one of the big ones being calcium, vitamin A, the B vitamins. I mean, people are missing a lot of things within their diets. I've helped hundreds of people through coaching. And a lot of the times people will enter coaching thinking that their diet is already really good. Say, hey coach, I think my diet's great. You can look it over, but there's probably not much we need to change. And it's shit, <laughs> it's shit. It's chicken, broccoli, and rice. You need to improve on this if you can do so. I recommend trying to track your micronutrients for at least a week, seeing where your deficiencies lie. You might find that you need to include more dairy products. You might find that you need to include more fatty fish that are wild caught. You might find that you actually need to increase red meat intake to get the B vitamins and various other minerals that we need in our human body. Um, and, and look, I know it's not the funnest and coolest technical thing to talk about, but man, it is, if you're invested in keeping your hair, one of the best things that you can do is increase your antioxidant status and lower your oxidative stress. And through dietary means is a really great way to do that. If you complete all 150 essential nutrients on a daily basis for your diet, I guarantee you your hair and body is generally going to be better for it. Where counterparts to me who don't track their micronutrients and do typically follow the chicken and rice diet don't necessarily have full heads of hair. Now, I don't know if that's a one-to-one -one correlation, but I'll leave it up to you to decide. You could do other things. There's a lot more that I could add to this list, but things that I just simply don't see as efficacious as others, right? I think, you know, microneedling is something to talk about. There's PRP therapy, which actually really hasn't been shown to do much for a hairline. There's genuine topical treatments that are experimental. So like RU5881, five or something like this. Uh, great peptide. I've used it in the past. It just generally makes my hair greasy and burns my scalp. So I don't tend to use it too much, but these things are out there and they do work. I just don't find them to be as sustainable and even reproducible in terms of the results and application with what I do now. I can take it on a very regular basis. The topical hair treatment was just a once a day thing, which was super easy. You just take a shower, plop it on your scalp and you move on with your day. And there's virtually no greasiness or grossness to your hair like with other topical products. The Dutastride tablets, very easy just to remember every three days or so. And then the other bits, nutrition is just something I'm trying to hone in on every single day already. And through these things, I believe that I've really been able to retain a very rigorous and sustainable hairline. It's not the best, like I said, like you see there's diffuse thinning here, but it's not horrible either. And I think a lot of people who would use you know, dihydrotestosterone derivatives for anabolic steroids would get much worse results typically 
especially if they're not taking care of these specific things. But if you did enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe, it does me a huge favor and it's completely free. It does help me get pushed in the algorithm, which supports this channel and it means the world to me. And I truly do mean that. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. Who knows, I might make a video about it in the future. And if you are interested in more hair loss stuff, we have a Discord group which talks all about fitness, pharmacology, and hair loss. So hook us up in there.